2020, the year no one asked for, but it's the year that I uh, needed. 2020 has been hard. I've had injuries back to back to back, and it's just made 2020 suck a little more. But in the beginning of 2020, on January 1st, I had this idea. I wanted to move for 20 hours and 20 minutes. There would be no distance, no destination, just forward progression for 20 hours and 20 minutes. But as the year went along, it honestly didn't look like this challenge was going to happen. And I was sitting down talking with my wife and she gave me two dates that this could happen. I had picked the date and then some things changed, which then allowed me to do it the week before, which meant I had three days to get mentally prepared to move for 20 hours. Was I prepared for this? Negative. Did I have a plan? Nope. But was I committed to making this happen? Yes. Well, uh, real quick, we just ended the Lock Doc Christmas party. Um, I'm going to run to his house. So this starts the 20 hour uh, adventure. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be slow and steady. Just gonna go have some fun and uh, off we go. The day before this fun run, I finally told a few friends. See, I hadn't told anybody because honestly, I wasn't 100% sure that it was going to be able to happen. One, I didn't even know if I would start it. And two, even if I started it, I didn't know if I would be able to finish it. 20 hours and 20 minutes. I have a very unique perspective on 2020. 2020 for me, probably one of the greatest years of my life. Hard, yes, 100%. But who says that one of your greatest years can't be the hardest? Just trying to solidify a little bit of 2020. Drive the stake in the ground. I made a lot of gains in 2020 and just want to be a little tougher. Why not try to move for 20 hours and 20 minutes? Just when you can, you do, and I can, so I'm going to do it. So this statement of when you can, you do has been honestly a phrase for me for 2020. This statement has reminded me not to take for granted um, the pain-free adventures. See, for most of 2020, I did not feel like I could and I would sometimes still go do these adventures and hurt myself even more. And so I just had to change my mindset of when you can, you do. So when you feel like it, go do it. Don't take for granted because you may be hurting and not be able to do it. Currently I'm going to the ultra running company because I've got to get a flashy blinky light. In all of my fun runs, I try to make it by the ultra running company. All the cool people are working today. All the cool people. Far Yachty over there. Amy, Dave, uh, so good. So I got some uh, blinky lights for the, my back, so now I'm officially safe. Uh, but guys, it was good seeing y'all. I will see y'all later. And uh, if you wake up in the middle of the night, think about me. <laughs> you got it, bye guys. The energy and excitement leaving the ultra running company was extremely high. I try to make it by there because it's one of those places that you can tell them crazy adventures and they're not going to tell you that you can't do it. They're actually going to be excited and honestly bummed that they can't join in the adventures. If you're ever doing something crazy, some crazy adventure, I recommend going by the Ultra Running Company just to tell them so that they can encourage you to go after this adventure. But now it's time to head to Ballantyne and I'm going to meet my first running buddy, Chad. Officially two hours in. Three hours in, feeling good.
doing good? Look, it's Chad, and I'm at Earth Fair because uh, I'm hungry, and uh, I filled, I emptied uh, three bladders and filled up another bladder, so it's time to empty the bladder. I'm uh, oh, four hours in, so only uh, a few hours to go. So. So I didn't video a lot of mine and Chad's run because we were honestly focused more on where we were running than documenting where we were running. Made it to 45. I was like, why not run it all the way out here? We don't want to tell many people where we ran, but it was a lot of fun. Well, this is where we part. Uh, currently at this moment, I think he's uh, very close. He's going to be very close to 10 when you get there. 8.2 right now. 8.2 and you got at least that. Dude, thank you so much for running with me. i uh, super excited leaving Chad because one, he was running his longest run to date. He would be very close to 10 miles when he finishes this run. And so the energy level was very high. I had eaten all of my snacks and drank all of my drink. And as I leave Chad, I get a text message from a good friend, Sam. And Sam was coming to find me and I was extremely excited for Sam to show up because when Sam would arrive, um, at that moment, things would go from okay to bad very quickly. Eight hours in, seven hours and 51 minutes in, and this is Sam. Sam is, uh, been walking with me. Uh, good dude. Chad ran with me for quite a bit, for about eight to 10 miles. I'm not 100% sure because I'm not keeping track of my mileage, but uh, I am keeping track of it. I'm just not looking at it because the goal is forward movement. It's not, it's not miles. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, I think I said eight hours in, so I have 12 hours to go. But at this point I had made quite a few bad decisions. One, I had not taken any warm clothes to help regulate my body temperature and my core temp was very low. I was shaking uncontrollably and unfortunately I was so tired that I couldn't run. So I wasn't able to generate any body heat. I was in a severe calorie deficit in a bad way. And I laid on the floor just shaking uncontrollably, trying to warm up. At one point, I called my wife to get her to come pick me up. Where are you at? Uh, sitting at Lock Dock. Okay, you made it back there, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to warm up. I, the temperature dropped so quickly. And, oh my gosh, I am, I am freezing. I barely can uh, use my fingers. But she's seen me do a ton of these crazy adventures. And so she knew that the pain that I was currently going through would be nowhere near the pain of waking up the next morning and realizing that I had quit. So she told me to get dressed and to keep moving. This popsicle is headed back out. <clears throat> be the last time I'm here. And then I go to no man's land. So. Off we go. About to walk back out into the freezing. Right now it's like 36 degrees and it'll drop another six degrees. So it'd be a good time. So at this point, I've been on my feet for over 10 hours. I am freezing, but now I have about 30 plus miles to head back home. And as I'm walking uptown, I get a call from my parents. They are, they're very concerned about me because I'm pretty tired, uh, rightfully so, 10 hours in. And uh, so they have asked if they could relocate me. So I'll pause my watch and when they drop me off, I'll unpause it. And it took me 40 minutes to get from Charlotte to where I'm at now, which is in Kannapolis. And so I'll be walking the Kannapolis Loop so for a lot of these adventures in the Suffer Club, there's a why behind them, like why I'm doing it. And I recommend and challenge any of you, if you want to stick at something, put a why behind it. Create a why, like why you're doing it. And then once you've created that why, create another one that is deeper than that why. 
So the why will help you outlast some of the tough moments in life. They just will. See, earlier when I almost gave up and I called my wife, she reminded me of the why. I had told her why I was doing this earlier in the run. And she reminded me, don't give up on this. See, I have a 13-year-old son. He turned 13 the week after I did this run. And in the middle of this run, at about 4 a.m., I recorded a video for him. You know, this run tonight, honestly, is for you. I'm not prepared for this, but I'm out here doing it. We do hard things. Life's not gonna be easy, but we can handle it. I reminded him of who he is, that he is made from the same fabric that I am, and to remind him that we do hard things. But also in the video, I let him know that I, as his father, will do the best I can to be the best example for him. It's just something that I wanted to do for my son. Oh man, my wife came in clutch. She got me a 12 piece nugget. And when she got it for me, um, she dropped it off at Lock Dock. I got 24, so I was able to eat 12, but I wasn't able to eat the other 12. And man, I just had one. Oh my God, it's <laughs> like amazing. Oh, so uh, 12 hours in. So as I'm circling Kannapolis, I get a text message. I don't even know what time it was, but it was from a coworker and a good friend of mine, Mick Douglas. He has had a newborn son and it was feeding time. And so he was calling to check on me and told me when he's done feeding, he would come out and join me on this run. So I was super excited and could not wait for McDouglas to arrive. Unfortunately, I was so cold and so tired that the only time I got the camera out was when I rested my feet on the wall to allow the blood to flow back down because my feet were swelling so bad. Better quit that. Cause that's not gonna end well. Yeah. So McDouglas had left and it was in the coldest part of the night. It was right before the sun came up. My energy and emotions were all over the place. It's the coldest part of the night. It is 6 a.m., it is 30 degrees, and I am 15 hours and 29 minutes in. And if I'm being honest, I was at the verge of crying. I was just in such pain and God, it just sucked. These last four hours are gonna be hard. I got two jackets on and uh, I'm tired and cold and hungry. But I was walking around a building and I saw the sun start to rise. It was amazing. The sun has come up, which is amazing because I was bonking super hard. I uh, stopped at Food Lion and picked up an insure. Shortly after the sun rose, my good friend Tyler Dancy came and walked with me. Let's see, Chad, Sam, and Sean McDouglas was four. I'm his fifth best friend. Fifth. He's the fifth. <laughs> friend to come uh, run and support uh, this crazy adventure. But my feet began to swell. And so after Tyler left, I made my way back home to change shoes one more time. Well, I have less than two hours to go, but my feet have swollen so bad that the shoes that I have on uh, are like bulging and my feet are throbbing. Like it's so painful. So I've walked to my house, which is something that I've tried to avoid because I've been running about a mile and a half from my house. And at this moment is where 
My favorite runners came and joined me. It was my boys. Under an hour, and this is my new walking crew. They keep dragging me, they're going so fast. Oh, my feet hurt so bad. I was super excited. So this is how I ended my 2020 run. My wife, Brittany, uh, has cooked bacon and other food. My boys walked with me for the last hour. Oh my gosh. I am tired, I'm hurting. Uh, my feet are in bad shape, but I finished, so that's all that matters. With these crazy adventures, I always find something new about myself. Sam made a statement, which I think is a great way to end this video. The pressure that you're feeling will pass, but remember, the pressure you're feeling is definitely worth what is ahead. Adios.